What the hell is a vinegaroon? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to Incredible Inverts and Other Animals with me, Phil. Now if it's your first time uh, watching any of my videos, uh, please do subscribe and uh, click that bell for notifications. Also please do leave comments and uh, give it a thumbs up, share this video. Now I said what the hell is a vinegar root? Now that's what we're going to look at today, they're incredible invertebrates. If you haven't heard of them or haven't seen them, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy this. Let's take a Okay, so what the hell is a vinegaroon? Well, this what you're looking at now is a giant vinegaroon or Mastigoproctus giganteus. As its name suggests, it is the largest of all the vinegaroons. And this particular species comes from the USA. But you do get vinegaroons kind of across the world in tropical and subtropical regions. Uh, so you get a lot in Africa and also in Asia as well. And I do have another species which will be uh, featured later on in this video from Thailand. But as I said, this is the, the giant one uh, from the US. Now, the word vinegaroon is a common name for these guys and for the group. Another name that you may hear them called is the whip scorpion. Not that it can be confused with the tailless whip scorpion, which looks very, very different. And I'll hopefully do a video on those at some point. Let's guys get the name whip scorpion from two reasons. So they've got the uh, kind of needle like looking tail appendage at the end of their abdomen so whereas a true scorpion would normally have a sort of a tail and a sting they have this little thing which they it looks like a bit like a whip and also they have these two little things at the front here that is moving around a bit like whips now believe it or not they are actually its front legs so these uh, pair of legs right at the front have actually been modified that work very similar to an insect's antennae, so they've become kind of a sentry organ for them. So they don't actually use them as legs anymore. So they walk on six legs, but as I said, they are an arachnid, so they do have eight legs. So a lot of people do confuse these with insects, uh, thinking that they only have six legs. But as I said, they, uh, the whip-like sort of appendages at the front are actually its front pair of legs that it uses as a sentry organ. So it can feel itself around, as you can see it doing here. So it tends to be a nocturnal species, so it can't really see that well. So this is kind of like its eyesight for it. So it helps it feel for its way around, feel its environment, feel for prey, feel for predators, feel for mates, feel for enemies. So they're really vital. So that's where the term whip scorpion comes from. So it's not a true scorpion, but it looks very similar to a scorpion. And it has these kind of whip-like appendages. But where does the name vinegaroon come from? Well, it comes from because these guys have a very special way of defending themselves, and it's by spraying acid, and in particular acetic acid, which is essentially vinegar, and it smells very much like malt vinegar. So when threatened, they'll actually aim the kind of needle whip-like appendage at the back of their abdomen, and spray this acid, this vinegar, and that's where they get their name vinegaroon from. So, and this stuff, they can be very accurate with it. They tend to aim for the eyes. And so that's a very effective way of defending themselves. Now, a predator comes along, tries to eat this guy. And it shoots acid at the animal. It doesn't necessarily hurt the animal, but it's enough of a shock to make it think twice. And it also, it smells. A lot, a lot of animals really like the smell of acetic acid. We, as humans, are a bit different. So if this uh, does spray... It does smell a bit like a chippy, and I named crayfish and chips, but it tastes nothing like the malt vinegar that we put on our chips, and I can tell you that from experience. So because it sprays this acid, it actually has no venom whatsoever, so true scorpions have a venomous sting. These guys do not, so they have no venom, so they're, essentially they are harmless to us. The way they catch their prey is by their pedipups or pincers at the front. These guys, they kind of look a bit like boxing gloves at the uh, front of their head there, but they open up quite wide and they'll catch small insects, other invertebrates, and they'll crush them. And that's how they sort of kill their prey. And then they'll eat them. Sometimes they will eat them alive, which can be quite gruesome to watch, uh, but also quite fun to watch at the same time. 
Now this species is a giant vinegarine that we're watching here as it comes from the USA and also Mexico and it comes from fairly arid areas uh, within those countries. So it likes it fairly dry in captivity but it can take some humidity and in the wild they sort of breed when there's sort of a slightly higher humidity as well. And, so, and they have been bred occasionally in captivity, uh, not a huge amount, a lot of the time it tends to be captive hatched, so where a gravid or pregnant female has been well caught, brought over and then has produced her babies in captivity. But a few places and a few zoos have actually actively bred this species uh, within captivity, so mating a male and a female and going through the whole process, so it can be done. Uh, but it is quite a delicate process and can be quite a lengthy process as with a lot of arachnids, especially sort of the scorpion and scorpion-like arachnids. It can take sometimes a fairly long time, but it's certainly worth doing. Now, although they have their defensive acidic spray, they are predated upon in the wild. So these guys reach around about 5 centimeters or so in length. So they make quite a decent meal for certain mammals. So things like raccoons, coatis, armadillos, skunks... And even peccaries have been known uh, to feed on these, and peccaries are kind of a, like a, almost like a wild pig-looking type animal. So their defence isn't without fault, it can be overcome by certain animals. Now reproduction in the species can be quite complex, and mating can last anywhere between 8 to 12 hours. After which the female will carry her eggs internally for quite a few months, and then she'll lay 30 to 40 eggs in an egg sac, which she'll hold under her abdomen. She'll remain in her burrow holding this egg sac off the ground, protecting it for around two months, after which the eggs hatch and the very bright white babies will climb onto her back where she will protect them. And they'll ride around on her back for around a month or so until they go through their first molt, which they then will uh, leave the mother's back. They look pretty much identical, but just a miniature version of them so, and they will then leave the burrow and go on about their business and fend for themselves and they can spray the acid from then onwards and then unfortunately for the adult female vinegaroon she normally dies fairly soon afterwards as that's her life cycle then complete and her job done and so this is the other species of vinegaroon I currently keep this is the Thai vinegaroon or Typhopeltus C.F. Danani. Now, as name suggests, this little guy comes from Thailand and is much smaller than the giant vinegaroon from the USA. But as you can see, they look fairly similar in terms of their body shape. So, so it's got all the same sort of adaptations as the giant vinegaroon, just on a much smaller scale. And these guys, like the giant vinegaroon, can spray acetic acid in exactly the same way as the giant vinegaroon and it also hunts prey so smaller invertebrates small insects that and, that, and kills them with its petty palps or its pincers uh, just the same way as the giant one now the cf in the scientific name is fairly important and a lot of sellers will put this in there as a way of saying they believe it to be that species but it may not be so not necessarily confirming it that this is a Tarnani. It's definitely Typhopeltus, as far as we know, but there are a few species of Typhopeltus that come from Thailand. Uh, like I say, it's believed to be Tarnani, so they put Typhopeltus CF Tarnani. It's believed to be over a hundred species of vinegaroon worldwide. So there's a fair few of these amazing little arachnids out there. And they range in size from tiny ones that only get around 25 millimeters as an adult, to the giant vinegaroon. So there's a huge range out there and some of them can have various colours. Most of them tend to be kind of black like this one with maybe some browns and even some reds on them. And you get some with red flashes down the abdomen as well. So they are absolutely amazing creatures. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that look at the vinegaroons. Hopefully you'll agree with me, they're absolutely amazing animals. Um, very alien like as well, uh, something a bit different about them. They're fantastic animals, um, the two species I keep, love them to bits. Um, so yeah, uh, please again do uh, like this uh, video if you enjoyed it. Please uh, do subscribe if you haven't already, hit that bell for notifications, share, leave a comment. So, and uh, 
Till next time. Bye bye.